Welcome back to Oracle for Startups. I'm Whitney Dermick, and today I am joined by the CEO and co-founder of Digifarm, a startup that helps farmers increase their crop yields using machine learning. Welcome, Nils. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to be here. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about your startup, Digifarm. What is it that you do and for whom? Yeah, good question. So we're a uh, Norwegian-based uh, ag tech startup. We started in 2018 and really since 2018, we've had a singular focus on really mapping out or detecting the most accurate field boundaries in the world um, using, using deep learning and using high-resolution satellite imagery. And, uh, and why that matters when is really that uh, in order to create zoning tools, which is what we do for being able to help farmers reduce input costs and also increase yield potential, we need accurate field boundaries, which is kind of the baseline for all precision ag. Right, and we'll talk about zoning, we'll talk about technology, right. but first I would love to learn a little bit more about your trajectory as an entrepreneur. How did you get to where you are today? I'm actually on my family farm now, but I'm a 15 generation farmer here, just an hour northeast of Oslo. And I took over my parents' farm about six years ago. And, and really I had a couple of years, which were, which were tough uh, because of really extreme weather events. So I had one year where I had severe drought. And I had another where I had flooding and uh, I saw my yields, you know, plummet 30% year over year. So at this point I was thinking there must be ways to kind of help myself and other farmers in this new era. It's such an interesting contrast between the natural world and the world of modern technology. How does Digifarm help unify those two worlds? If I take it back, when I took over my parents' farm, a lot of stuff is manual, right? When you look at the older generation, because they used to write down you know, their yields and they used to write down their field activities in little books. And when I took over, there was like 20 or 30 books. So there's a generational change happening now when you see there's more data being uh, being processed, there's more data being collected, specifically on farmer uh, farmer side. And I think with the evolution of artificial intelligence, a lot of this is actually becoming tangible. And are farmers your customers? We don't uh, sell any services to uh, farmers or growers, but we work directly with B2B and B2G partners in the agricultural space, really across the entire value chain. And what we deliver through an API is this field boundary detection and crop detection and zoning, and really it enables us to scale in kind of larger environments, but the end user is farmer. Yeah. Right. And what technologies help Digifarm support your customers the most? Yeah. So I think from the outset, it started with us uh, building deep neural network models and really for the single purpose then in 2018, which led us to where we are today is detecting field boundaries. And we use deep learning both for detecting the boundaries. So training a machine to know how a boundary looks like, what's seeded, what's not, internal boundaries, external boundaries. And then also we use deep learning to increase the resolution of existing satellite data. It's interesting to see it come into life and machines being able to see better than the human eye. And the machine part is so interesting. So I heard you mention satellites. Are there also drones involved? Which, which actual machines come into play here? We use really uh, exclusively satellite data and exclusively uh, two sources of satellite data, Sentinel-1 and 2. So Sentinel-2 was launched by the European Space Agency in 2016, and it had this uh, really purpose or intended purpose of being able to have the ideal use case for environmental monitoring. And the great thing about Sentinel-2 is the highest resolution public satellite data available. It's mm -hmm. 10 meter per pixel, and it's free, but the problem is, 83% of all the agriculture fields in the world are smaller than two hectares and mm -hmm. 10 meter resolution is not enough. So that's why we increase the resolution to one meter and, uh, and use that as a baseline for, uh, so we, do use, we don't use any drones, but just purely satellite imagery. And so I imagine this technology as they, uh, as we help farmers increase their yields, we're also helping them save costs, but it seems like a high tech solution would be a financial burden rather than a benefit. So how do you make that work? speaking from my personal experience is farmers margins are getting squeezed and it's not just because of the changes in climate and and narrow windows of doing your field activities but it's also because if you look at input costs for, for crop production you know fertilizer seed and crop protection it's 50 percent of the total cost so it's an area that i think is very important to to work on and and one interesting thing is for a long time one field has been treated in the same way meaning that farmers will apply the same amount of fertilizer seeds and crop protection and really what we're narrowing, focusing on is this ability to create zones where you can optimize the quantity of fertilizer, seed, and crop protection. And that really significantly reduced input costs. 
do you see that increased specialization as being part of how ag tech is evolving with the support of technology? Yeah, I think I think it's the most tangible uh, way to help farmers uh, reduce input costs, and it also will help them increase yield potential. So how is the combination? So you're a you're a member of the Oracle for Startups program. I'm curious about how the combination of Oracle Cloud and also NVIDIA GPUs has supported your tech. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great journey and Oracle has been fantastic. So we're thrilled to be a part of the program. And it started with the NVIDIA inception program, which led us then down the Oracle path. And, and the, the one key thing for us is we're processing a lot of data and we have a, a big demand for GPU instances. And specifically the bare metal we use for Oracle now is, is critical for us to train the models um, and, and also to inference larger areas. So it's been wonderful to be part of the community and, and we see loads of benefits of, of using the bare metal GPUs. Mm -hmm. Has anything surprised you about working with an enterprise partner like Oracle? It's been positive, more positive than maybe you think. It's been one thing, I mean, we've been through a couple different programs from AWS and Google, and I think one thing that I find with Oracle, it's a community. You get a little bit more of a community sense with the whole Oracle for startups, not only from other startups, but the entire Oracle community. And, uh, and that's, been, that's been really supportive and, and, uh, and helpful for us. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just doing it because we want an invitation to the family farm someday. Yes, exactly. Well, <laughs> come on over. So ag tech or otherwise, what technology do you think is going to make the biggest difference in the next decade? It's interesting for us to be in this space because we, we operate a lot with satellite data and you see there's a lot of imagery analytics specifically in ag tech and the, there's more and more companies focusing on this area. And I think the, the reason is when you look at satellite data, one, it's, it's more scalable than if you look at drones. Operationally, drone is a little bit hard if you run large scale and you want imagery every you know, three to five days. So satellite imagery seems it's quickly evolving exponentially in terms of higher resolution, more satellite uh, data sources. So I think we will see a big change and I think we'll see a big involvement in how that plays a part in ag tech and, and helping farmers. That's really interesting. And what's next for Digifarm? Right now we have three clients that are going live in, in April, and then we're also running 12 other pilot projects uh, across the world, really. So uh, we're, doing, we're doing projects in Canada and in the US and Brazil and Australia and Germany, Italy, Spain, and France. Those are kind of our key areas that we're working in now. So that's a big part of us of validating the models, making sure we reach the same accuracy in those regions and, and also start delivering that data to clients. Mm -hmm. Are there some regions that are more challenging than others? Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing a couple of projects now in Myanmar and Thailand, and it's very difficult. And uh, the problem with Myanmar, for example, is we're running a crop classification project to see the effects of, uh, well, a deforestation from mice production over a long period of time. But the problem is you have really small fields and you have monsoon seasons, you have like very irregular, uh, uh, clear images from satellites. So it's not always clear the images. So we're getting closer and closer uh, every day. So I, I think we'll, we'll solve it, but it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the entrepreneur's bread and butter, right? Like throw me that challenge. <laughs> let me see if we can solve it. Exactly. That's it. So if people want to know more about your startup, where should they go? Yeah. Uh, we have a website. It's just digifarm.io. And uh, we, we have a very simple way for our clients to get started. Uh, we have a get started form and they define their AOI. So area of interest. And typically we, we like to do that as a kind of pro bono way for us to validate the models where clients have ground truth data or training data they can validate our models with. So, and they can always reach me on this farm or uh, email me at nils at digifarm.io or just come see me on the farm. It's great stuff. I'm so excited about your momentum and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Now, if you want to learn more about how your startup can reach new markets and scale up uh, with a partner like Oracle, go ahead and visit oracle.com startup. See you next time.